Hey, hey, good afternoon, guys. Uh, this is a video response, um, basically uh, after people had requested that I post something about my experience for for this. Uh, so here we go. Um, uh, Monday this week, I had bought a touch plate from eBay. Uh, I really wanted the Shapeoko branded one, uh, as I, I prefer just to keep everything uh, all in unison there, but uh, they've been out of stock forever, and they just keep saying they don't know when it's going to come back in stock. Uh, so all this talk about touch plates has got my got my brain turning, and I said, man, I just got to buy one. So I went ahead and I bought this guy. Uh, they sell it on eBay for 35 bucks. Uh, it's probably something you could have just made yourself, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into, and so I just decided to go ahead and buy one. Uh, plus, I don't know that my Shape Oko is actually giving me the accuracy and the tolerances that I need. It doesn't bother me because I've mostly just cut pine boards, um, but uh, for for doing this, I figure I, I better get it right. Uh, so anyway, 35 bucks off eBay. Um, when I looked at these, I went through many designs reading up on them. I, I went through uh, different websites and read how to install theirs, and then I just kind of averaged all that together. And because this really comes with no instructions, this is what you get. You get this chunk of metal and a set screw. There was a little chunk, maybe six inches of wire, and that's it. That's it. There's there's nothing else. So, um, But it turns out it's super easy to do all this. Uh, in my case, I have a JTEC laser added to my Shape Oko. And because I got this laser, I'm not able to use carbide motion. Uh, so I've been using Universal G-Code Sender Classic. Uh, recently moved to Platform. And then actually recently, more recently than that, jumped to Source Rabbit G-Code Sender, uh, which I prefer over everything. Uh, Source Rabbit is free and it just has all the features I could want. It's fast, it's simple, tons of macro options, which you really are very handy when you have the laser. Um, but anyway, uh, nonetheless, either one, Universal G-Code Sender or Source Rabbit, is gonna allow you to use probing features without doing any weird programming or extra stuff. Now, when you go to buy your touch plate, uh, one thing I learned was I wanted one with a hole in it right away. Um, some of them don't have the hole and the, the bit comes down and it touches the side and it touches the face out here. Um, but it's my understanding after doing a lot of reading on that, that in order for this method to work, you have to run a different code each time because you have to account for the diameter of the tool. Um, well. That's not really my style. Uh, I'd rather have it uh, be like a one button and let's get this shit going, you know. Uh, so with the circle, you can use um, a circle. Uh, you, you can find just the center of the circle. You can give it a code for that. So it doesn't need to know. The G-code sender doesn't need to know the diameter of the tool because it doesn't matter. It's just going to be the center of the circle every time. Uh, it doesn't have to account for half the diameter. Uh, so it doesn't matter. So that's why I went with one with a circle in it or a hole punched through it. Um, and turns out that the other half, the wiring was super, super easy. I was a little nervous about how I was gonna pull this off, uh, but it, you really, you just buy some speaker wire or you could get some, some smaller uh, solid core wire if you wanted to. Um, I guess there wouldn't really be a, an advantage either way that I can think of, but uh, the speaker wire is just super cheap. Um, and you can pick this up at any home store. Uh, same with the alligator clips. Um, so I put an alligator clip on a piece of speaker wire. Uh, I strip the other end down and punch it into the block using the set screw that the manufacturer provided. Um, and run these back to the board to where it says probe. I'll put a link in the uh, comment below as to the directions that I used. Um, I really only used one step out of the whole thing of directions, and that was just to understand where I was supposed to plug or terminate the wire to. Uh, to terminate to the board was a little bit trickier because there are no radio shacks or anything like that near me at all. So uh, to do that, I just used um, some, see if I have them laying around, some standard um, electrical butt terminals, and I just crushed them down to the size that I needed to snugly fit on the pin, uh, wrapped them in heat, heat shrink tube and uh, made a nice uh, barrier there to make sure that, that you know there was no cross or jump. I don't think there would be because it's such low voltage, but just in case. Uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let me hook it up and show you how it works. Okay, so pretty simple. You just go ahead and move uh, your tool 
pretty close. It doesn't need to be, you know, touching it, but it does need to be fairly close. I did notice uh, I, I was expecting this block to be heavier in my mind, and it turns out that they're super lightweight. Um, and because of that, uh, I do have to make sure I hold it the whole time the operation is running for the probing. Uh, maybe that's an advantage of some of the other blocks. Maybe they're bigger and heavier. I guess I don't know. Uh, that wasn't something I even considered before I ordered. Uh, so let's jump over to see the software. Um, as you can see here, I am using uh, Source Rabbit G Code Sender. Uh, there was zero work to get this to go with the Shape Oco. It just goes. Uh, gerbil is gerbil. It really doesn't matter what machine you have. Um, so that was uh, something there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take this. I'm going to reset my work position because when you start the probing, your Z cannot be below zero prior to starting this. Uh, so I'm going to reset work position. And um, I go to tools. I go to Z axis touch probe. Uh, the whole center is right below that, but we have to do these two separately. So first we're going to start with Z. Um, and so then you have to tell it the total... Uh, diameter or the, uh, the total thickness of the plate, uh, your your touch plate, right? So I just use a uh, caliper, which I have anyway, uh, and I measure that, and mine happened to be 3.24. Luckily, the software retains that setting, and so I don't have to remember it or retype it every time. It's, it's just right there. Uh, so there's not much to that. So we're going to jump back over here, and it's going to be kind of hard to do all this, hold the plate and the phone, but I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, touch the probe and you'll hear that it'll just take off and it'll, it'll wait for that contact. Okay, so that was that. And then we come back to the computer and it says machine touch probe successfully. Uh, so let me grab my mouse here. Of course, that was nowhere near the screen. And... Uh, Hit OK, and we close out of this window. And now you can see that the Z has moved uh, to 3.739999. And uh, if we were to take the plate away and hit return to zero, we'd be right on the wood. But uh, let's go ahead and do the hole finding first. And this one's going to be a little bit trickier for me just because of holding multiple devices at once here. But uh, so I'm going to advance the, um, the bit. Uh, up into the circle and let's try to hold that down maybe I should get a piece of tape just for this video okay genius idea got a piece of tape hold that plate uh, steady for us so that we can actually do this in one motion so you're going to advance the bit uh, into the circle it doesn't need to be touching the wood but it does need to be below the height of the circle in order to make contact on the sides of the circle uh, so we go back to the software now, and uh, it's going to go to Hole Center Finder. And as you can see here, it's going to allow us to adjust the speed. Uh, but you want to place the probe into the hole, just like I did, and you're going to push Find Center, and then it, it's going to go left, right, up, down, and or forward, back, whatever you want to say, and find the center of the hole. It doesn't matter it, that I didn't start centered, uh, you know, in terms of front back here, uh, because it knows the diameter of the circle, and so it finds that center every time. Great, so when it's all finished, it returns back to where it believes the center is. Uh, I am going to go ahead and, like I said, this tape was just here for the video, so I'm going to pull the tape, get rid of that crap, right? Um, and then I'm going to go back to the software, close out. I'm going to raise the tool out of my way. I'm going to take the clamp off, pull the piece. Hopefully we're going to hang that there someday. Got to put a hook in or something. And in the software, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to return to zero. And there we are on the corner of the workpiece. Perfect all the way around. So yeah, that's, that's it. $35 touch plate from eBay. No special software. 
no special calibrations, uh, no changing anything in durable. Everything just worked.